Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sarah's Power Holdings investor presentation relating to the joint venture in China. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just please simply type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet company dashboard. And just to note, this presentation is scheduled for around 30 minutes in total. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. And if you would give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company will be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to Elizabeth Skerritt, Director of Corporate Communications. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm really delighted to be joined by Phil Caldwell, our CEO, and Eric Lakin, our new CFO. I'm also um, very grateful to have Tony Cochran's support. He's our chief commercial officer, and he's based in Vancouver. He's been instrumental alongside Phil in, in getting this deal over the line. So I'm going to hand over to the guys to run through the presentation, and then we'd be happy to take some Q&A. Uh, Phil? Great. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth, and thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, and we're very pleased to um, talk you through what's an incredibly exciting deal and a very significant milestone for the company today and one that's been uh, highly anticipated. So if we go to the first slide, please. Um, those of you that know the company well know that we have a very strong relationship with Weichai, and we've always had ambitions for the Chinese market. We view China, obviously, as as key to getting to net zero and one of the biggest markets for our technology that there is. Um, today, we're very pleased to announce that we've signed a heads of terms um, as a three-way agreement, which includes one of our other major strategic partners, Bosch. So the addition of Bosch is incredibly um, exciting because it strengthens this deal significantly. Bosch um, is, is probably well known to you as, as the, the global industrialist and manufacturer, but also has a very significant operating history and footprint in China with over 55,000 employees. It already has a very strong relationship with Weichai as well um, in supplying various different business streams into Weichai. So it's a, it's a logical partner to add into our, our collaboration for, for China. And the intention now is that we are actually going to have two entities, two joint ventures that service the China market. Um, the first one will be a three-way system joint venture where we pool our capabilities between Bosch, Weichai and Serres to develop uh, solid oxide fuel cell systems for a number of applications, including motive and also significantly adding stationary power applications to that. The second entity will be a two-way um, entity uh, for manufacturing of stacks in country in China. Um, it's very consistent, this deal, with our business model in that our, our main role in this will be as the technology provider and providing the, the license to an extension of our, our relationship with Bosch to enable manufacturing in China. So I'm going to hand you over to, to Tony, our chief commercial officer, to give you some more details around these, these different uh, joint venture arrangements. Tony. Thank you, Phil. I'll talk about the uh, uh, some of the ingredients of the two joint ventures that Phil just mentioned. The first one uh, I'll talk about is the system joint venture, which is the joint venture that Ceres will have uh, an equity position in, a uh, 10 percent. The uh, majority shareholder will be uh, Wei Chai, and uh, Bosch will uh, have the residual stake above and beyond what 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 Ceres takes in its 10 percent holding. And the scope of this joint venture is to produce the systems that access the market applications for both stationary power and uh, motive, commercial vehicle and, and bus uh, motive power in China. Um, under, under the agreement, both Ceres and Bosch will be providing licenses to system designs um, some of them are represented here. Um, examples are there's a Bosch 10 kilowatt system, which is under uh, validation testing in, in many applications in Europe. Um, the extension of that product line would, would also be well suited to the China stationary applications. And obviously the work that we've already described 
uh, between Ceres and Weichai on developing systems for buses and uh, and stationary applications would also form part of the product lines of the of the system entity. Um, the combination of that expertise is expected to um, not only expand the product portfolio but also expand the market applications accessible to the JV under under a license. And uh, initially, the uh, stacks that will be incorporated into those systems will come from. Uh, the Bosch facility in, in, in Germany that's being being developed right now. And uh, subsequently, once the factory is established in China, it would be primarily serviced from that from that factory. Um, so if I go on to the next slide to talk about the uh, stack joint venture. So the uh, stack joint venture um, will be a venture that is heavily majority owned by Bosch with a minority interest from Weichai. Ceres will not be an, uh, an equity holder or, or, or a party to that joint venture, but that joint venture will be practicing a license from Ceres, which would be an extension of the Bosch license already being practiced in, in Germany. And uh, what this deal enables is Bosch to build uh, a factory in, in China uh, using a lot of the learnings and the footprint that they've already been working on during our collaboration of the, over the last two, two years. And the benefit of this, of course, is that um, you don't have to go on a second learning curve. Um, we're, we're benefiting from all, all of the investment that Bosch has already made in de-risking de the, the implementation of a manufacturing footprint and they will already have an active factory in Germany as they establish their manufacturing footprint in China. Um, and obviously that, that not only limits the risk, uh, but it also could uh, enable an accelerated execution of that manufacturing footprint, which is uh, what we all, we all hope for. Um, the, uh, the royalties on the, on the stack will be will be preserved as they are structured in the uh, agreement with Bosch. Obviously, the payment streams for the access to China will be incremental, um, but the royalty streams per stack will be consistent with uh, the, the, the active agreements that we've already described. And Eric is going to go through some of those financials now. Um, and just a, a last last slide on the market in China. Uh, we could spend this entire session talking about the market in China. We, we won't try and digest all of it other than to say that this collaboration has materialized because the Chinese market is seen by the three parties as, as, as the largest market in the world for, for this technology. Um, China is embarking on a very ambitious energy transition in support of some of the things that they committed to do uh, to, to, to the world in, in the recent COP meetings. The uh, first step, as, as we perceive it, is going to be a, a migration from coal to a much greater use of natural gas. Obviously, that plays very well to Sarah's technology. But as we've already communicated, the transition is, is a long-term transition from coal to natural gas and ultimately to zero carbon fuels. And the Ceres technology is seen as an enabler of that entire transition. So not only the first step to natural gas, but also to future steps into zero carbon fuels and ultimately hydrogen. And uh, so this is a very ambitious uh, long-term play by the three parties uh, in the largest market in the world for uh, clean energy technologies. And, and we're very excited that, that we have some of the strongest players in the industry collaborating with us. Thanks, Tony, and great to meet everyone uh, virtually. And I must say, I'm very pleased to, uh, for my first investor meeting, uh, to be part of the presentation for this uh, important strategic collaboration announcement. Um, as Phil has, and Tony have, have mentioned, uh, this new joint venture arrangement uh, is building on the current uh, business model uh, that Ceres uh, already has in place uh, with its strategic partners 
So it's a model of initial license fees. Um, so the license fees will be 30 million pounds um, in total, uh, split equally between uh, the stack and the system joint venture. So payments from those uh, entities uh, ultimately to the UK company. Uh, we expect the payments uh, to be spread e evenly over three years. The timing of the revenue recognition is to be determined uh, and it's subject to the detailed agreements. Um, so we'll have to update on that uh, later once those are known. Um, and so that's a high, high, um, high profitable income stream. And then the investment itself, uh, we're expecting up to 10% investment in just the system JV, uh, no investment in the stack JV. We're expecting that investment to be of the order 20 million pounds, likely to be spread over the three to four years. And the total funding for that stack JV uh, is to provide um, uh, working capital um, uh, losses and cap capital expenditure up to the point of break even of that system joint venture. And then beyond that, uh, once the business is profitable uh, down the line, we'd expect to receive uh, additional uh, funds in terms of dividends from that uh, system JV. In terms of the royalties, and that's the the real value uh, from this arrangement, um, there'll be uh, royalties um, consistent with other arrangements uh, that Ceres has. A previous guidance has been uh, 50 to $100 uh, dollars, uh, per kilowatt. Um, and uh, so over time, uh, those royalties will increase um, as volume grows. And, if, uh, and any interim uh, between license fees and when royalties become significant, there are minimum payments uh, planned for the contract to uh, to fill any any uh, gap uh, during those one or two years before production becomes significant. And as a last point says here, uh, detailed agreements are now being prepared um, and we expect uh, to finalise definitive contracts in the coming months. You may be familiar with this slide. Uh, this just reinforces the business model that Ceres has talked about. And so we've got, we're in that near-term growth phase um, where we receive license fees. It's worth adding, there'll be expected to be additional engineering services as well, providing uh, to, uh, to the uh, joint venture uh, as well in the meantime. And then over time, uh, once the production volume starts and sales of uh, the system and stacks commence, we'll receive royalties from those um, on an on a, uh, ongoing basis um, each year. With that, I'll hand back to Phil. Great. Uh, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Tony. So look, to summarise, you know, we've been working on this deal for quite some time. Um, we always said we wanted to do the right deal that takes us into China in the right way. And I actually believe now that with our very strong partners with Wei Chai and the addition of Bosch, we really do have the potential to make a pretty formidable partnership, one of the strongest, I believe, in the industry that can really uh, go after the Chinese market. Um, near term, as we said, it's, it's worth 30 million to us over the next three years. But beyond that, um, it, the value of this deal is really in the royalties as we scale the business for the Chinese market and the the scale of opportunity in, in China is, is is pretty evident for all to see, and it, it will grow in the coming years. Um, it's very significant to us as we build out capacity for our technology. This will, will be a second manufacturing facility for Bosch, following uh, the plan for the 200 megawatt facility that it has in place uh, for, for Bamberg in Germany, which is planned for 2024. So we, we have relationships, obviously, with other partners as well. but what we're doing is we're aggregating global capacity in, in blocks of hundreds of megawatts towards towards gigawatts ultimately to service the, the global fuel cell market. Um, it really does strengthen you know the, the future scale up of the of the company and gives more visibility to investors of how we're building that out. And as Eric said, um, we'll be able to give more details once we actually sign the definitive agreements and then uh, form these joint ventures, but it's an incredibly exciting deal for us. We're very pleased to get to this point 
and that concludes the presentation and we're happy to take any any questions that's great phil tony eric thank you very much indeed for your presentation and updating investors this morning ladies and gentlemen please do continue to submit your questions using the q a tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen but just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and we'll notify you by email when they're ready for your review. Um, Elizabeth, I haven't given you particularly a long time to review the questions that have been coming, but you can see investors have submitted a number of questions. Perhaps if I may hand back to you to read out those questions and give a response where it's appropriate to do so, and I'll pick up from you at the end. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. And hi again, everyone. Um, we've had a few questions come through, gents. Uh, if I could start maybe with a question for you, Tony. Can we explain why Saras has, has not taken an equity stake in that second stack JV? Sure. Um, so taking an equity stake in a, in a factory or a joint venture is, is not our typical line of business as a technology company and a licensing company. Um, it was it was something that we did uh, with with Wei Chai in the framework of the agreement that we had agreed uh, a couple of years back. And uh, to be honest, the this new uh, engagement uh, doesn't require as much direct uh, resourcing from Sarah's to enable the stack joint venture to exist um, and to be successful because of all the things that Bosch now brings. And so for, for the two reasons, one are, are the, the need for Ceres to directly participate in enabling its success is diminished. And secondarily, um, as, a, as a licensing company, um, it, it puts us back more in a pure play licensing mode rather than becoming owner, part owner in, in large factories that require a lot of capital and a lot of operational expertise. Um, so that was why we made, we made that decision. Great. Thanks, Tony. And, and perhaps an extension of, to that, um, in terms of the uh, licensing of both Bosch IP and Ceres IP into the system um, joint venture, what is what is coming from Bosch and what's coming from Ceres is the, is the question. Yeah, so initially what we're contemplating is uh, Ceres will contribute um, the IP related to the bus range extender system, which we've been working on for several years now with Weichai, as well as a 30 kilowatt um, stationary variant of, of, of that design, which is also under development. And Bosch will contribute the system that, that they have publicly disclosed, which is a stationary uh, commercial uh, combined heat and power system in the 10 kilowatt class range. And so what, what the idea is that we will strengthen the JV's uh, market access by having a larger pool of product lines that uh, both parties enable through these system IP licenses. Great, thanks, Tony. And, and Eric, can I come to you? There's a question around, um, can Ceres's financial contribution to the Stack JV be funded from current cash resources or will a fundraise be necessary? Yeah, sure, Elizabeth. Yeah, the short answer is yes, we've got the uh, resources uh, to fund the current business plan and the investment in the joint venture. No additional uh, fundraising will be needed. Great, thanks. And, and a, and a follow-up just to that. Will, will you get 10% of the profit from the JV, one of the investors asks? Yes, yes, of the, of the system JV, uh, assuming we have a 10% holding of the equity, it'll be treated as an associate, and so we'd, re we'd receive the a 10% contribution on the bottom line of losses and eventually profits um, uh, from that joint venture. And over time, once there's distributable reserves, um, we would get uh, our share of the dividend payments as well. Brilliant, thanks. And Phil, can I just come to you? Because I guess this goes beyond the China, um, you know, and this these specific JVs, but one of the investors asks, are royalties paid on a, um, a kilowatt basis? And, and can you comment on the value of pounds per kilowatt that we achieve in terms of royalties on our stack and um, system IP? Yeah, so the, our model is that royalties are received on a per kilowatt basis. And I think previously we've, we've given guidance of between 50 and $100 per kilowatt. And this 
this is in that range it's consistent with that um obviously in this deal we get royalties both on the manufacturing of stacks so stack production and also from the system ip injection which we're sharing with bosch but we also get system level royalties as well so we we get we benefit from both sides of that so it's entirely consistent with with uh, our established business model yeah absolutely and then there's a sort of follow-up to that sort of saying when do you expect to see significant royalties from china will it be in 2025 or later do you think the exact details will become clearer once we actually sign the definitive agreements and we'll announce jointly i, I believe at that point with with bosch and wei chai uh, the way that the deals are, are structured structured typically is we have upfront license fees which we've disclosed here and then when we start production we tend to have minimum payments until production levels reach a certain point and then the royalties surpass that minimum level so the shape of the deal looks very similar uh, what we are not uh, in a position to disclose here today is the exact timing yet yeah, that would be inappropriate for us to do so without our partners yeah, absolutely. And and Tony, perhaps coming back to you, we've just had a couple of questions around, can we give any sense of the capacity opportunity near term or longer term um, from the JVs? Yeah, so we, we, we won't be able to specify exactly what capacity will be put in place at what time, because that's a decision um, that, that will be made with our partners under the definitive agreements. Uh, but um, what what we are intending to do and part of the strength of the deal is to benefit from the learnings of the first factory that bosch is putting in place in germany as we described so the first factory that bosch has described in germany under our license is a 200 megawatt building block of capacity and uh, obviously that blueprint is very very useful in uh, in establishing a very credible path to a footprint in China. The exact size of that factory will, will be described by Bosch in, in, in future announcements related to this deal. Great, thanks, Tony. And, and coming back to you, Phil, there's a couple of questions around, you know, does this announcement have any implications for the shareholdings that Bosch and Wei Chai hold in Ceres? No, it has no, no impact. Great. Um, and then perhaps well, sorry, guys, we've had quite a lot come through and there's only so much time to deal with them. Um, just there was one question here on if you could comment, Phil, probably is the best place, how things are going with the SOEC development. Um, and if there are any partnership discussions happening around that, it's obviously not relevant to the deal today, but a couple of questions on SOEC and what you're seeing. Yeah, look, um... We've, we've previously said we're, we're pleased with progress on SOEC. Um, we've had a, a high level of interest um, from potential partnerships on that. And I think those discussions are progressing very well. Um, so we, we hope to be able to update uh, in the not too distant future, hopefully that you know we, we can kind of move, move forward with some first partnerships on, on SOEC. But I think we'll we will do so when it's appropriate and when we have those at the right level of maturity. I mean, probably a good extension from that. There's a question here as well on, is your SFC technology still evolving and are you planning new research to keep ahead of the curve? I mean, that's absolutely the business model, but you know, could you comment just on the SOFC side as well? Yes, there's a, there's a lot of activity going on on the SOFC. If you remember last year, we, we raised additional capital and we split that capital uh, almost we raised 180 million, 100 million was to go into the new area of SOEC, but 80 million was going into the, the um, SOFC side of the business and the fundamentals behind that. And really um, the R&D that's going on on the SOFC side is future fuel compatibility. <clears throat> so Tony mentioned transitioning towards future fuels um, and higher power applications as well. So things like the marine sector are looking at fuels like methanol, ammonia, um, as we look at um, utility scale power and power systems for some of these new applications, we're also going up in power as well. So there's a lot of activity going on on the SOFC side of the business. 
Great. And Tony, if I could just come back to you, and um, there's a couple of questions sort of coming in around the com competitive positioning in China and, you know, what we expect to see in terms of the balance of product between stationary and mobility uh, with, you know, with this, uh, excuse me. Yeah, so um, I'll answer the first question, the, the competitiveness in China. Um, you know, solid oxide fuel cells off, offer the opportunity to compete with central generation um, at, at uh, a distributed level. In other words, we, we offer equivalent or higher efficiency than even some of the central generation plants, but we allow, to allow people to deploy that in, uh, in, in use cases that are close, closer to the demand. And in China, I think people are aware that there is a, a growing demand for, for energy um, and that the grid, grid stability and the provisioning of reliable power is, 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 a, major, is a major issue that, that, that China will be addressing. And one of the ways they'll be addressing that is obviously uh, moving away from central coal generation to lower carbon, natural gas fueled uh, distributed generation. Which, which makes our solution uh, the most competitive way of using natural gas in many of the use cases. Um, and obviously our technology, as Phil just mentioned, will also be future proof to other transition fuels, which have an even lower, lower carbon footprint. There's, there's incredible incentives and pressure for uh, industry and commerce to reduce carbon footprint and to deploy these assets and the market analysis we've done is, is, is very compelling. And I think it motivates some of the ambition that, you, that you're seeing here today. In terms of the mix between motive and stationary, we, we, the answer is we're not sure yet. There's a strong market for each of them um, and markets have different time horizons for their adoption. Uh, what we can say is that Wei Chai, our partner, is very motivated to uh, access both markets in a very in a very meaningful way, um, and they have good channels to both. Great, thanks, Tony. And, and perhaps I could just come to you, Eric, once again. Um, I think you did touch on this, but uh, someone asks: Is it fair to assume that there are additional near-term revenue opportunities to Ceres from engineering services, etc., on top of that thirty million license revenues that we detailed? Mm. Yes, is a short answer. So that. You know, 30 million is represents just the license fees, uh, which we split between the two uh, joint ventures uh, and received directly to Ceres from those joint ventures. Um, the, the engineering services on top of that, um, as we support the partners in developing um, and de the systems for the various applications that, that uh, Tony and Phil have mentioned. Great. And, and another one, perhaps for you, just, just so that we make it very clear, um, to confirm, you receive all the royalties and none is shared with the JV from the China stack and systems. That's not quite correct. Well, right. Yeah. So just to clarify that point. So we, we receive um, we receive all of the uh, royalties uh, from the stack uh, JV. Uh, it's consistent with the current model uh, that we've got with uh, with Bosch, Bosch and others. Uh, we share the royalties um, with Bosch on the systems JV, uh, as mentioned, both Parties will be cut with Bosch. Both parties will be contributing um, system development, IP, and know-how into that JV. Uh, but if you aggregate the two um, royalty streams, it's still within, I expect, still well within the range uh, we previously guided of uh, fifty to one hundred dollars per kilowatt. Brilliant. Thanks. I'm conscious that we're at time. Thank you so much for all your questions. We will make sure that we answer all of those um, after the, today's call. Um, and if I could hand back to Phil just to make any final comments. Yes. Look, uh, thank you, everybody, for your time today. Um, we're very pleased with this milestone for the company. It's been eagerly anticipated. But I think um, from our point of view, this combination of, of Bosch, Wei Chai, with Ceres as the technology provider is, is a formidable partnership and we're really looking forward to getting the definitive agreements done and I'm moving on to the Chinese market. So um, thank you for your time today and uh, look forward to updating you again in the future.
That's great. Phil, Tony, Eric, Elizabeth, thank you very much for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close this session now as we're going to automatically redirect you so you can provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure it will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Sarah's Power Holdings PLC, I'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.